In South Asia, Pakistan's Geo TV, the country's largest network, is off the air. Pakistan's TV regulators suspended Geo's license for 15 days and fined it the equivalent of $104,000. The offense? Airing an interview blaming Pakistan's inter-services intelligence spy agency, the ISI, for the attempted assassination of one of Geo's anchors. Hamid Amir is a superstar on Pakistani TV. He was seriously wounded in an ambush last April. To tell us more, we have Hassan Iftikhar with us on Skype. Iftikhar reports for GOTV and is a Link Asia contributor. Hassan, welcome to the program. Give us the details of the shooting of Hamid Mir and the accusations against the ISI. Uh, uh, Hamid Mir was shot in Karachi, that's Pakistan's largest city, when he was on his way from the airport to our offices in downtown the city. It seemed a very, very well planned and coordinated attack on him. Uh, Mr. Mir had been previously saying this, that his life is in danger from both uh, the TTP, the Taliban, as well as the ISI. So his brother came on television and he repeated those uh, allegations. And after that, uh, the powerful military establishment went to Pakistan's electronic media regulatory authority. And this is unheard of. This has not never happened in Pakistan's history that the military goes or the defense ministry to which they went this time goes to some regulator to ask them to shut down a television channel. But this happened in Geo's case. Groups like Amnesty International and the U.S.-based Committee to Protect Journalists have condemned the suspension. How about Geo's competitors and the rest of Pakistan's media? Uh, there's this one group, the Dawn Group, that's Pakistan's largest English newspaper. And they've been there for the last 70 years. Uh, they have taken a very clear line that this is uh, akin to, uh, you know, curbing freedom of expression. But the other competitors, well, uh, they have not been so kind to Geo in this uh, time because I think that one of the reasons would be that Geo has 60% of the uh, advertisement revenue in the whole country. So these other competitors think of this as a way of getting rid of Geo and earning easy money, I, I, I believe that. Where does social media fall in the dispute? Uh, it, the, 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 the response on social media has been very interesting. Uh, there have been some who have supported Geo. A very sad day for freedom of expression and free media, said one uh, social media user. Another said, shame on whoever decided to ban Geo. Shame on all of us, the so-called silent majority. Another user said of the, uh, of the suspension orders that this is sufficient action against Geo. Now get over with it and move on. However, there are, there are many who, who do not want to forgive Geo uh, for this, this act. One of the users said, is 15 day and one crore fine enough? I guess punishment for Geo should be much more as they tried to defame our army. Another user said, nothing less than ban Geo will compensate the damage done to Pakistan. Hassan, what happens when the suspension is lifted? Uh, ever since the suspension orders came in five days ago, uh, Geo has been uh, online. You, people can come online and stream it online. And that has seen a massive increase. You, you're, we're talking about quarter of a million people simultaneously logging on to our website and to see the, 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 the bulletins and to see the news coming in. So basically, from, if we get from that, I don't think that Geo will, will, will probably get damaged by this in any way. But, but there's also this fear that this suspension might not end after 15 days, that there might be a case put to the Supreme Court maybe that this channel should not be allowed and this suspension order should be continued until the final verdict comes out. All right, so still much at stake here. Thanks, Hassan Iftikhar is a Pakistani journalist employed by Geo TV. He's also a Link Asia contributor. Geo says it's lost $35 million in advertising since it was banned. The company employs about 10,000 people. Moving now to South Korea and the opening of the trial of the captain and crew of the Sewar ferry that sank in April. 292 people died in the disaster. 12 are still missing and presumed drowned. Many were school kids on an excursion. The charges against the crew range from murder to criminal negligence. The captain and three others face the death penalty if they're convicted of homicide. Eleven others face prison. Relatives of the dead are calling for heavy punishment and tempers are high among Koreans. The judge in the trial felt he had to stand up for defense attorneys who he said were just doing their duty to ensure a fair trial. 
The trial will revolve around how the captain and his crew abandoned the stricken ferry, even though most of the passengers were still on board and apparently were told not to evacuate. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.